guess what? And guess what? It's story time. For those of you guys that have not had like your first big girl job yet and you are thinking about going into an office environment, put a bunch of people together in an office environment, things get messy every now and then, okay? The most ratchet behavior happens in the office sometimes. I don't know about yours, but mine for sure. Grab your wine, snacks, everything you need, girl. Welcome back. Once upon a time not long ago, I worked in this office, right? And I really, really liked it. And I was like the support for like seven or eight reps. A lot of my reps were super, super young, either in college or right out of, and they were super immature and they were kind of annoying, to be honest. We were such a small branch that we all knew each other really well and yeah, so we got pretty comfortable. All of my reps basically had the same personality, give or take like an introvert versus an extrovert, but basically same thing, okay? They kind of had a habit of ass kissing, especially like the directors and higher ups. They really wanted to make their mark. Like they just had not gotten their confidence about them when it came to this career path, with the exception of one rep. Jason was not new to this game. He was a veteran in this game, okay? Whole different vibe, bitch. Um, at this time, he was like in his late 30s, early 40s, chose to never get married, never committed. Um, he spent money on himself and whatever the fuck he wanted. He lived a very fabulous lifestyle, bitch. And I know this because of the cufflinks he would wear and the suits he would come in and the car he would drive, bitch. He was one of the people that my reps would kiss his ass. When I tell you he didn't fucks with nobody, he did not fucks with nobody. And he would make a, like a joke or two and then he would go right back to his office. He is not here to mingle. Would never be found dead in the break room, bitch. Like he did not drink the coffee from our office. Like never ever, like he was like, nice espresso machine type of dude like okay i'm just trying to paint the picture of the personality of this man y'all he intimidated me when i first started at this job because you know everybody else was like around my age and i was like okay i get you and i understand you and i felt very confident until i met jason and very quickly you know he let me know hey i don't need the introductory piece um this is what i need from you on a weekly basis um i need you to oversee my calendar i need you to he was very precise and you know what i actually appreciated it it made my life a hell of a lot easier because these other mofos around here, girl, they did not know their ass from a hole in the ground, bitch. Like, they just did not know what the fuck they were doing. So it was a like breath of fresh air to finally work with somebody that knew what the fuck they were doing. I got to know Jason a lot more. Girl, he was grimy. He was grimy. I find out that not only is Jason, like, single, he loved fucking dating. He loved it. He would come in with the craziest, most, like, clutch your pearl stories from his dating escapades and bitch, I was hooked, okay? So every single week I would have to have a meeting with each and every one of them to like get updates. And because Jason did not need no fucking help, we were always on the same page. He was always emailing me when he was supposed to. Like that meeting specifically, bitch, was for him to fill me in on his fucking dating escapades because he would go on and on, you guys. We would debate for fucking like the whole time that it was like my meeting slot with him, we would debate because he was so hell bent on the fact like he knew women and women were so predictable. He had very much misogynistic vibes about him and he wasn't hurtful or demeaning about it. He was just very matter of fact and like, <laughs> like I figured out the code bitch and I was like, Fuck that. Honestly, bitch, at first I was like, you're fucking lying. So I thought that for a while. Believe me, don't believe me whatever i had the same mentality all the way up until one night came around and we decided to go to happy hour together and there was like a brewery that was like not too far away from this office so we would have happy hour there all the time my best friend lived near over there she would come david would come meet us sometimes and like that was just like the big hub spot especially on fridays bitch it was a good time and i'm in the middle of jason and two of my reps we're talking about work we're talking about all kinds of shit and out of nowhere bitch I feel Jason's whole body like turn and I just hear him say, what are you doing here? There's this girl standing in front of him, very petite, blonde, cute. And she is looking at him like she wants to kill him. And I'm like, without skipping a beat, he was like, let's talk outside. Let's talk outside. And he like goes to stand up and we're on bar stools, bitch. And she's like right there and she's not moving. And she was like, no. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, bitch. So everybody, all of us got quiet, all of us. We had no shame. She starts going off on like the basic shit. Like you didn't call me, you didn't text me, like what the fuck? Like you just disappear. 
I'm sick of your shit and like, you know, just going off. The bartender, because she was like causing such a scene, the bartender looked at him and was like, dude, you gotta get her out of here. Like now. She was like causing a fucking scene and we were like, I see them go outside and there's a window there and you can see Jason like trying to talk to her and he's like kind of shoo shooing her off and she's like literally pleading with him, begging him and like you can see all throughout her demeanor like she's devastated and he is just, mm -hmm. he calls her an Uber. He gets her in the Uber and then comes right back inside into the bar, comes, sits down like nothing happened. When I tell you this man was cool as a cucumber, like this was his everyday fucking life. And I was like, he had told me about the story about this girl that he met at the post office. And he was like, yeah, that's her. Remember when I told you about that? And I was like, that is not post office girl. And he was like, yes, the fuck it is. And I was like, oh. from that moment on, I was like, okay. He might be telling the truth. It was happening a lot, like believe it or not. And it wouldn't be in person. Like we would get gifts, edible arrangements, flowers sent to the office for Jason from different women. I swear to you, like they were, there were women that were calling the office wanting to be transferred to him. They didn't get his voicemail or they didn't get him. They would keep calling and hanging up. And this happened every now and then. He would typically like put an end to it right away. It's very evident that this man was not embellishing any part of his life. And I was like, fast forward, we end up doing more happy hours. He meets David. He had already been drinking, taking shots, and he starts giving me and David not only financial advice, but like business advice, how to build your wealth, like what not to fall victim to. Like he was really dropping some fucking gems, right? He really took a liking to David and was like, you have so much potential. And he looked at me and he was like, I already know that you have a lot of potential. Like if you guys play this right, like fucking millionaires, you know what I mean? You know what? That's what we should use our meeting time for is like, let me mentor you. Like essentially he was asking to be my mentor, bitch. And he was like, let's discuss that. Like I, I can definitely give y'all pointers cause like whatever. So I thought he was just talking girl. I thought he was just like tipsy. I had forgotten all about it. I thought he forgot all about it. But when they came around and he was like, hey, you ready for our meeting today? Yeah, you know, we're gonna talk about this and this and like this case file. And he was like, um, what? I was like, you know, this one has to be completed by this. And he was like, eh, I already have that completed. And he was like, aren't we, aren't we gonna be talking like financial business? And I was like, oh my God, you were serious? And he was like, fuck yeah, let's go. And I was like, okay. So like, y'all, I got so excited. Pen, notepad, like let's do it. Like I love just like learning from people that have experience experience bitch one day comes around jason comes in he's like he looks disheveled for like the first time and i'm like what is going on and he was like dude like he starts like laying this thing out and he's like all of a sudden this client doesn't agree with this policy and like we've already gotten it through underwriting like we have to complete the entire application again and he's like just talking like a million miles a minute and i'm like okay 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 and he was like this time like i actually need your help today like i really fucking do and i was like okay y'all he like had his coat hanging over his arm and he was like meet me at 4 30 and in his hand I see some sort of alcohol I don't even know what type it is okay it's brown it's a liquor girl it's a liquor okay, this was not rare for Jason during our meetings he would always be sipping on whiskey or like whatever like I don't really know about the browns with the big ice cube and shit like he would drink that he would be sipping on that like throughout the entire fucking day okay and a lot of my reps did that. Even my own boss would do shit like that. Go to his office and sure enough, he has two glasses set on his filing cabinet and his entire table is full of files and like just all of this data, right? So as soon as I come in, like he pulls the chair around and he sits me down. He grabs the glass, he hands it to me. He goes, take a sip. And I was like, okay. And he just like takes a deep breath and basically the whole fucking case file was screwed. So Jason's trying to find loopholes. He's trying to put things together. He so we start like really dissecting this entire case and trying to figure out how we can make this work all of a sudden his phone rings so i take that as my cue to go and i'm like okay well you just you have a good weekend like don't stress okay bye i start walking down the hallway no like what are you saying right now what do you mean and in my mind i was like oh my god whoever that is like this is like the worst moment because he is so fucking stressed out and pissed. As soon as I hit the stairs of the building, you know, I can see into the parking lot and there's a car that's like backed up into a space and the headlights are directly like pointed at the front of the building, like at the doors that I just walked out of. So as soon as I walk out, I'm like literally like a deer in headlights and I'm like, what the fuck? And this person, I can't see who's inside or anything. And I'm like, okay. So my car is on the left. I start making my way over there. Halfway over, I hear that door open. And I freak the fuck out and I'm like, what the fuck? And I like look over there and I see this girl getting out of her car and she's on the phone 
hella fucking loud. I connect the dots immediately and I'm like, oh my God, no fucking way. That's like, that cannot be, that cannot be what I think it is. Not even 30 seconds later, I make it to my car and I can see out the back window, right? And this girl's in the middle of the street and she's like fucking yelling all this shit. And I'm like, oh my God, like what the fuck? Sure enough, here comes Jason out that fucking door. And he comes like, when I tell you galloping, bitch, like this fool was like fucking galloping. He ends up taking her by the shoulders, backing her up into her car. I was like, oh, he puts one out, right? So I backed my shit up. I backed up and went forward. And I swear that Jason popped his head up and was just like, and I was like, damn, fucking messy. I'm like, you know, I go home. Now, I don't remember how many weeks, but it, was, it took like, two, three weeks, something like that. During the interim of all of this, this same girl, the one that was in the parking lot, was on Jason's ass all the time. Now, this was not the same girl from the bar. This was a completely different woman. We met her at some book signing. Like, they... He thought it was gonna be casual. And, uh, you know, he was like spitting his game to her and he was like, I'm always honest. Uh, with the women that I'm seeing in any capacity that like I am not here for a committed relationship Like I let them know right off the bat as I did her and so I was like, okay, and he was like, well, she didn't like what I had to say and uh, Now she's been all over my phone and like showing up here and I was like What that's all he told me about her and I was like damn that's crazy like I Hope you figure that out. Fast forward and the day comes around where I have to have my mandatory meetings with all my reps. And he again took the last slot of the day in order to get all of this paperwork together for signatures. And he was like, we just need to finalize everything. And I need a fresh set of eyes to look at this shit because I want nothing to go wrong. And as soon as I go in there, we get to work, bitch. Printing things off, highlighting shit, like getting everything prepared and everything's looking all good. So he goes over the entire packet. He does a once over. He really takes his time. He turns it towards me and he was like, let me know if you see anything. And I was like, I got you. So now I'm super focused and I'm looking at each page top to bottom girl for like any, anything that we need to change because bitch, this was a pain in the ass. So I'm laser focused. The door opens. I am pulled out of like my focus so fucking harsh. It was violent bitch in a millisecond. A whole ass war erupted in that office, okay? And it was a lot of fuck yous, who's this bitch? Why is she here? I knew you were fucking around. What are you doing here? Like I told you to stop fucking showing up here. And y'all, I am just like, Oh, girl from the parking lot is standing in this office right now over me, okay? I'm in the chair and she is like right here, bitch. Like facing him but pointing at me, bitch. Looking dead ass at her nail like while she's doing this. Bitch, if you don't get your fucking nail, I'm gonna fucking face. He starts threatening police, starts threatening to file for harassment, like to get a restraining order. And I was like, oh my God, you guys, they start fucking like going at it and I'm I don't know what to do in this moment because I don't know how serious is this is gonna get like she seems super fucking aggressive am I gonna have to fight this bitch like I don't want to have to fight this bitch because that's super like fucking ridiculous and they're still fighting and I mean just yelling and yelling and yelling and he is not backing down and so she's right here the door's right here and I'm like okay I'm just gonna try to make a simple exit because this has nothing to do with me and literally like they're gonna blow out my eardrums they are yelling so fucking loud my reps did not have a set schedule they would come in and they would they would like come in whenever they wanted to so anyways bitch it was like me and one other person besides jason that was in the office and i'm like okay no sudden moves no sudden moves i don't want to be the bitch's ass you guys i take two steps and then you decide to fuck around with some little young thing that works in your office that doesn't even know how to wipe her ass right really jason ma'am my ass is pristine clean bitch I'm trying not to take the bait because like i was like i don't want to get pulled into this i don't want to get pulled into this like she's here helping me with my job you're at my job he took that completely sideways and she was like oh you're gonna fucking defend this bitch you're gonna defend this little bitch that's like fresh on eyes so that's like a child she's a child and i was like Y'all, she starts saying the most vile shit to me. This is how you work your way up? <laughs> really? You start fucking your coworkers? Yeah? Yeah? That's what that's what your mom taught you to do, huh? That's what she taught you to do. And I, <laughs> I just wanted her to finish. Cause like it's getting to the point where like I'ma have to get involved because she's going too far, bitch. Like she was calling me all kinds of names. Nothing about this situation said that anything like that was happening. Like it was literally perfectly stacked papers on the fucking desk. Everyone's fully clothed, bitch. He had a thin ass window in there, had blinds on it. The blinds were open. 
Like, <laughs> bitch, what? So I'm like, I'm gonna let you finish. In my mind, bitch, I was like telepathically trying to communicate with him. Like, if you don't get her, this is gonna turn into a whole different situation. It like literally scared the shit out of me how fast this man moved. And when I tell you he fucking bear hugged this bitch, he bear hugged this bitch. And he brought her into him. Like she was still facing him, but like talking shit to me. And so he bear hugged her and brought her into him. And he's like hugging her and over her shoulder. He's like, go now. Say fucking less. I don't have nothing to grab. I get up. I walk out. And she is fucking losing her mind in there. Let me go. Let me go. No, like, why did you ever talk to her? La, 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 la. And everything in me, bitch, everything in me wanted to go right back over there. And like, not just plead my case, but be like, bitch, who the fuck do you think you are coming at me like that? And like, you're not even going to fucking give me the benefit of the doubt. Like, nothing about this warranted this situation. Like, you are being a whole ass psycho right now. I had never, ever, ever had a fight in my place of business. Literally stopping every few seconds, like fighting my urge to turn around because she's just saying slick shit still and I can hear him like trying to restrain her to give me enough time. And I looked over at my boss's office and I was like, I'm at, I'm at work, like I can't, I can't do this. I ripped myself away from the situation. I go to my desk, I grab my fucking shit and I leave. I was so mad because I had never, ever, ever had any anybody say those, anyone say those things to me. I had a lot of issues when it came to intimacy. I I had a lot of issues when it came to intimacy and I was scared of it. So when anybody, any bitch would come at me and try to accuse me of like being a, a hoe or a fucking my way up to the top or whatever it is, like y'all, I would get so unbelievably offended and I would like get sick, like physically sick. Like it would make me just, it was, it was a trigger. Like I was so fucking mad that she was saying shit like that and I was like I can't even I was legitimately doing my job I was doing my job we had like a suite inside of a bigger building and so I walked out of the suite and I'm walking down the hallway towards the front of the building and I hear feet just running towards me bitch if you come after me I'm a fucking fight so I turn around and I'm ready bitch and it's one of my co-workers and he was he worked on the other side of our suite dude I thought that was you who's that yelling and I was like you thought that was me and I keep walking he walks with me and I was like dude I gotta go so I tell him as we walk through the parking lot everything that was happening and I told him I was like if I have to deal with that bitch I'm gonna beat the shit out of her and like he had never he had never seen that like that angry side of me and I was like I will not deal with it because I swear I will go to jail. I left and he ended up calling the police. I don't know what the fuck happened after that. And when I got back to work, my boss talked to me about it. He had a meeting about it and it was him and one of the other execs. There was no fucking professionalism in this office. And like, they didn't even come at me like my superiors. They came at me like, so like, what the fuck happened? Like they wanted the tea. And I was like, are you guys serious? Honestly, like, are you okay? Like what happened? We do want to make sure like your safety or whatever. And I was like, nah, nah, nah. Y'all just want the fucking tea. And they said that Jason was going to be working remotely for a few months until he figured out his personal life. Although they found it entertaining, I think that they were kind of annoyed that this came to their office and like police had been called and they were very embarrassed. I was doing a lot of my work with him electronically and he would come in very infrequently and we always maintain like a friendship. He did apologize. He was like, get me like special things for my birthday and stuff and bring that up and be like, thanks for like, <laughs> you know, dealing with my shit. And I'm like, yeah, it's fine. So like we were pretty cool friends after that. And he was actually the person that um, gave me the confidence to quit that job because uh, my boss was extremely abusive. He had very, very bad PTSD and he would like full on yell and scream at myself and one of my coworkers. Jason was the one who was like, dude, you need to fucking go. And he was like, like now. And uh, so I will always appreciate everything that he's taught me and everything. But yeah, I almost got into a fight in my office, girl. And like, it was just like the most random drama. I was like, I wish that I could remember verbatim the things that she was saying to me. But she was like saying some off the wall shit to me. And like to him about me, is that who you're thinking about when you're fucking me? I was like, y'all, she had a mouth. She had a very, Okay, so I know if you guys want to hear more messy stories, especially working, you know, in offices, I'm sure you do. And uh, definitely give this video a like, help your girl out. And don't forget to subscribe. I would love to grow my channel and get some more content up over here for you guys on a more consistent 
basis as I am feeling better now. Ow. But um, thank you guys so much for being here. I love y'all and I will see your fine ass in my next video. Peace out, y'all.